Hello, my name is Mike Hurst. I work at Highland Hill Farm, and today we found this branch out in the field, which is an excellent example of how a bagworm can kill a branch or a tree. And what this is, this is the bagworm right here, and this is the branch of the tree. And last year, the branch was this big, and last year when the bagworm died, it had a, its little sack was completely around the branch. And when it died, it just left it there, and for next year's growth, could not go around the little sack that I created and start girdling the tree. And it girdled the tree to the point where all this extra, the cells right here, could not transport material down. So this part of the wood died and it no longer could, could get wood up to this part. So this branch is definitely gone. And what happens is that you can look right here that a branch has two different kinds of tissue to it. It has xylem and it has phloem. Xylem is on the inside of the branch, and it's the wood, and that transports water up, only one direction up. On the outside of the branch is called phloem, and phloem only transports sap down and in. And what happens is when this sac was all the way around the sides, and the branch started to expand when it grows, that sac girdled the tree, and the phloem was cut. So when the sap ran down, it could not run all the way down to past the bagworm, because that's where it's real small right there. It stopped right there, because that's where all the phloem tubes were cut. And the phloem tube is called a sleeve tube. And what happens is, as the sap goes down, it makes the cells get bigger and bigger and bigger, and the cells, they try to squeeze against themselves to squeeze fluid going down. It can't go anymore, so that the, the sacks keep on getting bigger and bigger right here. And that's why it gets bigger right to there. Sort of like squeezing the toothpaste in a toothpaste container and having the cap on. You can squeeze it but and the material will start to go out but it never makes it out. It just gets all jammed, bottle jammed. Yep, just about like that. Okay, well thank you very much Mike. And if you have questions about your arborvitis, give Michael a call at 267 446 2376 and he'll be glad to answer your arborvita questions. These are our Atlas Cedars here at Highland Hill Farm. A real nice blue coloring selection of a tree that will grow fairly large, fairly rapidly. It likes moist, well-drained soils, but can take some clays as long as the clays are not like wet, moist, stagnant clays. Well-drained clay will be fine. It's fast growing. It's been, been noted to be 80 feet by about 25 foot wide. It's a beautiful tree, one you wouldn't want to be without. Next to it right here is our Acker Grissom paperbark maple. And then over here we have a bunch of red maples. These are Japanese red maple blood goods. So give us a call at 215-651-8329. We're here at Highland Hill Farm on Route 313 and Fountain. These are our four foot emerald greens that we have here at Highland Hill Farm. We can deliver and plant these all up and down the east coast. If you need quick, instant privacy, this is a tree to consider. We also have over here Leland cypresses and green giant arborvitis, which make great instant privacy. So give us a call at 215-651-8329. These are some of our five to six foot green giant arborvitis, one of the best trees for creating a screen or a windbreak for fast growth. They can grow up to three feet a year. They are cold hardy throughout the Northeast, and we do deliver and install them for you. Give us a call at 215-651-8329 for your arborvita needs for screening and buffering. This is one of the greatest trees for helping you reduce wind speeds that hit your house, and that helps you reduce your heating and cooling costs. So give us a call, 215-651-8329. These are four foot emerald greens in pots. Just give us a call at 215-651-8329.